Hey Roadrunner fans, I'm Jason Galvin. Welcome inside the Cake Lee Center for Student Success here on the campus of CSU Bakersfield. For a new segment, we're starting as we head into the summer here uh, with Athletic Director Ziggy Siegfried joining us called Ask Ziggy. Ziggy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Looking forward to it. Yeah, these are all questions submitted by you, uh, the Roadrunner fans that help keep this program going and building so strong. And speaking of a great year for Roadrunner Athletic, Ziggy, what do you think are some of the major accomplishments of the program this year? Yeah, when, when I look at the accomplishments, I believe we had a successful year. Um, and I typically will, you know, go over the four pillars of success that many people hear me talk about. Uh, the academic excellence, the student athlete experience, competitive success, and also engage in the community. So I'll give a few highlights there. Uh, as far as academic excellence, you know, I can tell you we have the highest graduation rates that we've ever had in our history. Uh, we also have the highest uh, NCAA academic progress rate scores. So those two areas are really important. And then last but certainly not least, we had 50 scholar athletes walk across that stage at graduation, at commencement. So really proud of our academic success. Student athlete experience, uh, it's another area I believe we took a step forward. Um, we did $2.5 million dollars worth of renovations to facilities that directly impact the experience of our student athletes. We renovated the Accardo Center locker rooms for our basketball programs and volleyball programs. We also put in the new Kern Schools Blue Court, uh, which I know a lot of the fans really liked, and, and several other things. And then, you know, going into next year, we've already started $2.5 million dollars worth of facility projects that will be completed in the next year. And one of them I just can't wait to see is the Harvey L. Hall Family Plaza, which will be really special. Competitive success, um, I believe we had some highlights there, especially with some of our uh, individuals. Um, and you look at the track and field program, had the best year in their Division I history. Um, swimming and diving won six championships, including three uh, WAC championships and also three NIC championships. Uh, so definitely proud of that. Our wrestling program, once again, sent multiple uh, individuals, which was three, uh, to the Nationals. Um, and they did extremely well. Um, the men's basketball program. Uh, the men's basketball program, expectations are at an all-time high. Uh, but for the third time in four years, they went to postseason. Finally, with uh, baseball here recently, that success, uh, we had three guys get drafted in the Major League Baseball draft, and including our highest pick ever uh, in the history of our program in Darius Vines. And then finally, the, the fourth pillar, engaging the community. Um, that's an area I believe we had significant success in. We had the most ever community service hours by our student athletes. Um, we also had a year where our ticket revenue was at an all-time high, including group ticket sales. Our broadcasting has really gone to another level, and, and I like to call it, you know, an ESPN level. Um, and many of our fans who couldn't make the games could enjoy watching our games right there on ESPN3. Um, we had three plays uh, on ESPN Top 10, which, which was phenomenal. And our viewership and the quality of our coverage was just what I call uh, top notch. Also, our social media um, was excellent. And just jumping down to one other thing uh, around engaging the community, we're on pace to set a new all-time record for dollars raised for our student athlete scholarships through the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. So overall, successful year and can't wait to kind of take that next step next year. Ziggy, a lot of excitement around this program as CSUB gets ready to transition to the Big West, now 12 months away. What are some of the biggest challenges that this program faces getting ready for that move? Yeah, you know, that's something we think about every day as we move into the Big West Conference uh, 12 months from now. And, and what I can tell you, I like to say instead of challenges, I like to say opportunity for growth. Um, and, and there are some areas. Uh, you know, first, you look at facilities, uh, that's an area of focus where we must raise the dollars that are needed to enhance all of our facilities. Now we obviously have priorities in that, but 
Um, facilities will be key as many of the Big West schools continue to enhance their facilities. You know, we're playing a little bit of catch up there. Scholarships. Um, we have 16 programs. And I can tell you right now that only three of those 16 are fully funded to the maximum allowed amount by the NCAA. So obviously that needs to change. I want to give all of our programs the opportunity to compete for championships each year. So we're going to be looking to the community and, and asking for support there. And then finally, just staffing. Um, you know, we're, our staff has grown. We have very skilled people, but we need more of them. Um, and especially in, in certain areas. So I would highlight facilities, scholarships, and staffing. And just to wrap all that up, you know, we will, as of right now, we have the lowest budget in the Big West. Um, and I'm looking to change that. So the future's bright. We won't make any excuses along the way. Um, but also I want to make sure that we, you know, identify those areas where we need to grow. And Ziggy, our next question from the fans, what is the biggest challenge you face as an athletic director? You know, that's a, that's a great question. Um, what I would say is college athletics is, is, it, is an extremely complex uh, operation. Uh, I think if you just ask the common fan, they, they ask me when they find out I'm athletics director, oh, so you coach or are you, uh, what all do you do? And the truth of it is we're running a full out organization that is, you know, $18 million budget, 90 uh, staff and coaches, and, and also uh, 325 plus student athletes. So to answer that question, I would say I have so many individuals in our department and I want to make sure each and every one of them from the coaches to the student athletes to the staff, I want to make sure they have what they need to be successful. And uh, you know, that's something with limited resources that I'm not quite able to accomplish yet. So uh, what kind of keeps me up at night, what I think about is a lot is how can I provide our department what they need for, to be successful. Um, and by the way, we have an absolutely great uh, group of coaches, student athletes, and, and staff. So I'm very fortunate when it comes to that. And Ziggy, another question from the fans here, um, but we, we know, of course, we have a new president at the university in the last year, and Dr. Zelezny, what has your relationship been like with her at the athletic department? Yeah, you know, Dr. Zelezny, uh, I think the whole community almost knows her already. Uh, and what I'll say is she's extremely driven, uh, very strategic, and she just has a significant amount of energy. And, and our relationship has been great. Um, and what I can tell you is she made it very clear on day one that she values the athletics department. On day one, she toured all of our facilities. And since then, she's attended significant amount of uh, events for athletics. And she continually shares how excited and how proud she is of our scholar athletes. Uh, so I think that's very important. And, you know, what's exciting for me and what I like so much about Dr. Zelesny is how much she's been entrenched in our community already. Uh, that's extremely important in this community. And she, you know, she just doesn't take days off. So the campus as a whole just has a new level of energy that I have not seen before. And I think it's because people are excited they're excited that she already has a strategic plan. They're excited that the fact that we're going to have our first ever comprehensive capital campaign. And there's already construction on our campus. So a lot of excitement and, you know, she's just going to do phenomenal things here at CSUB and for our community. And Ziggy, we had a lot of fans that emailed in when we announced this segment. They wanted to know about facilities, and we've talked about how important those will be as we get ready to move into the Big West. What are maybe like the two or three biggest improvements you want to see in the facilities over the next few years? Yeah, the, the biggest improvements, the top priorities for us are a new sports performance center, which will include strength and conditioning and sports medicine, so athletic training. Also a new track and field complex um, and enhancements in the baseball facilities. Um, so, you know, in the future, what we want to see is we want to target those areas 
that impact the most student athletes and then also we'll need to fix and improve areas for all of our sports. Enhancing our facilities is a significant priority for us uh, over the next several years. And Ziggy, a lot of the questions that were facilities related was something you touched on a little bit. I want to expand on the baseball program as we get ready to move into the Big West. And the Big West is nationally known for its baseball power, national championship contending colleges, universities across the conference. What are the goals and what are the plans to improve the facilities here at CSUB so that the Roadrunners can go out and compete with some of those programs? Yeah, and I'll tell you, we know the Big West is, has a rich history in baseball. Uh, every year, the Big West has contenders uh, typically in the College World Series. So we have a baseball program that's been around 11 years. Uh, we've had success. We've grown. Um, but we also know that the programs like Cal State Fullerton, you know, have a pretty significant head start on us. They've been around for close to 40 years. Uh, so we have some work to do there. Um, as far as priorities, uh, the first one is we want to get an enclosed hitting facility. Uh, so our players can, you know, utilize that all around the year. Uh, and, and also we can involve the community in that hitting facility. We also um, need to get a new clubhouse uh, and locker rooms for the baseball program. And, and finally, just to improve the fan amenities uh, will be a priority for us. So we're going to continue to do that. Our baseball program is, is extremely important to me. And, and Jason, you know this. Uh, you're out there all the time. You do our broadcasting. Mm -hmm. um, and you see what I see. We have extremely passionate fans. Yeah. Uh, our community, Kern County, Bakersfield, they love baseball mm -hmm. and, and have a, a rich history in it. So they're very eager to see that program that's only 11 years old, see our program, uh, grow. Right. And, and what I'll say is it's not going to happen overnight. Um, it's going to happen, um, but it will take the community. So we're going to be looking to uh, our community to support this baseball program to enhance the facilities for our coaches and our student athletes. And that will help us expedite the growth so we can be in the College World Series and not only be there, but hold up that national championship trophy. So I, I can't wait. Yeah, and when we talked about it, I mean, the Big West has proven that it can win national championships, and this community has proven it can support baseball from all the years with the Dodgers, and we got to watch Kobe Lewis in the World Series as kind of the local hero, and then CSUB getting to go uh, in, into the tournament a couple of years ago, and, and even with Darius last week getting drafted and all the momentum there. This is a great baseball community. Yeah, absolutely. And Ziggy, on the topic of facilities around campus, you know, one of the first facilities that you see when you pull into CSUB, is the track and field facility and you've mentioned it is in need of dire upgrades right now what are some of the things that are being discussed and that can be done to upgrade the track and field facility yeah there, there's definitely a sense of urgency when it comes to uh, enhancing our track and field complex uh, currently we cannot compete at the NCAA division one level on our track which means our student athletes cannot uh, have home competitions we have in our track and field program a phenomenal head coach we have phenomenal student athletes and we have a community that is highly successful in track and field mm -hmm. so now it's on us and we'll ask the community to help with this to provide them our track and field program the resources they need to be successful so what i think you're going to see in the next let's say three to five years you're going to see significant growth in that track and field program and it's all coming uh, sooner than most would probably think. So I'm excited. And the timing it. seems right because we're coming off such a great year from a competition standpoint in track and field. Yeah, absolutely. They, uh, they do such a great job with what they have as far as resources. And I can't wait to see what they accomplish once we provide them what they need. And Ziggy, we'll, we'll get serious here again on this one. This is a question a couple of people had asked, and I think it's an important one. They want to know, how is it determined which sports on campus get which degree of funding? Which sports get fully funded? Which sports need to go out and fundraise themselves? You know, the funding model, there, it is very complex, but Jason, I'll tell you the 
there's so many aspects that go into exactly how many dollars each of our 16 uh, sports receive. And it's something I spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time strategizing about. Um, and I think I've said this publicly um, a couple of times, but you know, our men's basketball program specifically is really the engine that drives the success of all of our programs. And, you know, we do, that is our top priority when it comes to competitive success. And for, for many reasons, uh, if you look at just the revenue we generate from tickets, 75% of those dollars comes directly from men's basketball. When you look at corporate sponsorships, same thing. And, and from a bigger uh, perspective, um, I'll give you an example. So in conferences, money is generated from going to the NCAA tournament. So like with the Big West, UC Irvine went to the men's basketball tournament last year. Right. Not only did they go, they won a game. Right. So what happens is a significant amount of money is going directly from that to the Big West Conference to be dispersed to all the schools. And we're not just talking about a small amount of money. Right. You know, we're talking about millions and millions of dollars. So again, when it comes to where, what we're going to fund, men's basketball gets a lot of attention. Um, and there's a lot of pressure that comes along with that. And I think Coach Barnes would tell you that. Um, but my goal, our goal, is to fund all 16 of our sports. We want everyone to have what they need to be successful. And, and that's something that, you know, I, I'm not going to sleep until we get there. Um, so we'll continue to push, we'll continue to prioritize, but the bottom line is, you know, five years from now, seven years from now, we're sitting, talking. I'm hoping I'm able to say, hey, we're all fully funded in scholarships. Men's basketball season and women's for that matter, they'll both be here right around the corner, it feels like. As soon as we come back to campus, the teams will be getting ready. How does the men's program look this year under Coach Barnes? Yeah, that's a great question. I wish we had Coach Barnes here, but uh, he and I talk a lot. And, and what I'll tell you is, um, we're all extremely excited about this coming year. And, and just the men's basketball program as a whole, um, you know, expectations are at an all-time high, uh, but we have the right things in place to see a lot of success. You look back just a few years ago, you know, we're in the NCAA tournament playing Oklahoma. We followed that up with a uh, whack regular season title right. in addition to going to the NIT and making it all the way to Madison Square Ga mm -hmm. uh, Garden for the semifinals. And, and then you had that year in between where Coach Barnes really did a little bit of shifting. He recruited a lot of freshmen uh, to come in and, and kind of to help the program reach that next level of success. Um, and then obviously this year, or this past year, uh, we were back in postseason, won some games on the road. Um, but just talking about next year, you look at those guys that were recruited three years ago now, and you have the high-flying Tajay Moore can jump out of the Accardo Center. You have Justin McCall, who also can jump out of the Accardo <laughs> Center. Um, you have Greg Lee. You have Justin Edler Davis. Um, and then you also have some individuals who are coming in. Um, you know, we have four guys, I believe, at six foot seven and above wow. who will be on our team. We have a transfer that was the A-10 freshman of the year in DeMonte Buckingham, uh, who set out last year but will be with us this year. We have a transfer from Colorado State, LMU. And then we got these two big guys um, that actually played against each other in California <laughs> who uh, will be juniors, community college transfers, that are both 250 pounds plus, around 6'9". Oh. Um, and so I think the fans are really uh, going to like what they see next year. We're going to have a presence. They, the question was on big men, too. Right. We're going to have a presence down low. But I think people have to remember back, you know, some of our most successful years. You talk about Matt Smith, Kevin Mays. Those guys were not just – tall they were around six nine six eight but they were also big and i think you're going to see that again this year so we're pumped ziggy final question for you here we have a fan who wants to know uh, what makes the csu bakers field athletic program uh, special compared to other athletic programs around the country yeah you know that that's a a, a great question because it's, it's kind of what drives us 
to know how much we can accomplish in the future. Um, what I'll tell you is we have a stronger community here, Bakersfield, Kern County, than other communities. You know, we're the only Division I program within 90 miles. Uh, we have, I guess you would just call them, we have grinders. And that's what we're all about in our athletics department is just grinding, work, you know, having passion and getting things done. Um, so the first thing that's unique is our community. Secondly, the students. Uh, I just hope everyone could have the chance to come and meet the students in our campus. Many are the first in their family to graduate. They love CSUB. Um, they, they love coming to our games. And we have come nowhere close to where we're going to be with our students coming to games. And when we increase that, when we get that same passion that they have about CSUB and we get them all in the Accardo Center, Hartfield, um, wherever we're in competition, I think you're going to see that our athletics department can compete on the same level at the Division I level that we did at the Division II level winning 30 national championships. I think we can get there. It will take to get expedited our community, yep. and it will take our students. And so the timetable is still to be determined, but I have no doubt that we can win those same national championships at the Division I level.